Hi dear friend, this is the environment I like. It is man-made, but it is slow, like nature. Why? Because Taoism advocates it. Lately, we are doing a lot of highbrow topics to be used in the sociology, anthropology, economics and transculturalization modules in the bachelor program. So, I thought maybe today we can talk a little bit about lifestyle and life necessity as an alternative for these difficult subjects. And I promise you, it is going to be fun. For the purpose of this story and uh, of course also for fairness, I will take my own lifestyle as an example because it tries to implement much of the lifestyle I advocate. In this video, which is recorded on my, well, supposed holiday, uh, I was of course working to create new images for the videos and also to try to create new interesting images which show diversity within my videos uh, backgrounds. And in this case you see me practice uh, Tai He and some ritual meditations uh, in this video as part of what I actually do every day, things that I do, practice, in fine tuning to the universe as a whole as uh, Taoism uh, advocates uh, through practice first and then uh, well in the rituals uh, towards uh, well more complicated issues and then uh, well I also try to please my wife and my children to be participants in that life and of course to help them realize their goals for my children the goal primarily is to grow up and of course to do something which is akin to what I do at least that's my goal for what I have to learn what I want to learn uh, we'll have to figure out over time there are several points in my lifestyle that I point out as relevant in this video and I will summarize them for you already as three that is namely first uh, Lao Tzu who said that you should both be as a child and be as a wise old uh, person uh, to be able to live a long and healthy lifestyle and uh, second the Taoist view to be both a productive and constructive member of society uh, that is of course because of organized Taoism and Zhuang Zhe's more anarchistic view of at least appearing not to look productive uh, because looking productive is uh, dangerous because people might think you are useful and then uh, burden you with all kind of tasks uh, one should appear a nuisance uh, Zhuang Zhe says uh, as to avoid uh, the undue pressures on your life because of uh, uh, you know appearing to be able to do those things i remember that from some of my teachers they said like oh you're able to do all kind of stuff uh, quite easily and as a result of that maybe we should let you do these kind of things and in meetings uh, people would give me all kind of tasks like oh you can do these kind of things because uh, yeah you're a hard worker as a Taoist, you try to be active for at least 24 hours a day and to make sure that you are going to be doing things that are useful for your process of becoming an immortal or a god or whatever is your goal. And of course, also to be doing things that are useful in society as a whole uh, without appearing to be very significant in many other ways. It is meant to be also an inspiration to other people because at the moment when you are having a good lifestyle it benefits your health it benefits your happiness and it also benefits your understanding of life as a whole uh, through which you actually can provide people with examples of how to do things and offer skills skill sets uh, to redirect the content of life for Taoism that starts with choosing actions in your life which are moral so trying trying not to do things which are harmful to nature or harmful to society in Confucianism the emphasis is more on being productive to society than to nature nature in itself is not seen as very important but 
for Taoism, all of that below heaven is relevant because you're trying to integrate your existence in the pathway between heaven, earth and human beings and you try to move between them in the hope that you're going to achieve your final goals and the merits that you collect from doing the things in society these are eventually going to help you over this little bump between just working very hard and being very productive. We can say that in Taoism there's sort of like a grading system. This grading system has to do with how you are organizing yourself. So you can say these are marks that I have to complete to be able to get somewhere. Your moral choices about what you do and why you do them is one. Uh, the second one is to be able to perceive life as two different kind of things at the same time. On the one hand it is like an academic study. That means yet that you have to have a grasp of all the facts and processes that are making up your life and making up your biology and making up your role in society and making up your role in the cosmology as a whole so that over time you are able to juggle all these things into a unified whole uh, which makes you which helps you to make the right choices then the third part is of course a little bit more complicated because the issue here is trying to become more meditative in life so that you understand that it's not only a study of facts and so on but it is also a meditative observation through which you develop a particular kind of neutrality and detachment from all the emotional investments that people have between them in their lives and that are causing so many problems between people in itself being detached and emotionally calm does not mean that you're not going to have any problems uh, there's going to be all kind of things happening like what you see in trying to make this movie there is uh, interruption from the environment which is distracting there is a uh, lax in your memory because you haven't practiced something for some time and you decided last moment like oh let's go do this uh, of course then you choose just the one thing that you haven't practiced for a month and as a result of that it has gone back to the back side of your memory you can't remember everything at the same time and that is the whole thing Thing in uh, Taoism you have to start to learn to remember things every time all the time and so on you have to actually become perfect a little bit like the homo universalis like uh, Isaac Newton was supposed to be homo universalis where he was representing the ideals of its culture and as a Taoist you have to represent the ideals of its culture it's not enough to be uh, well what you say a slacker the skeptical irony of Taoism is that you have to appear one and uh, that is why Taoism has the uh, appearance and the criticism that people are just basically eating from their noses and I remember in the monastery when I was studying there that the young people the young monks also had this idea that Taoism is about doing nothing because of uh, Wu Wei and Wei Wu Wei uh, having things done uh, by themselves uh, but that is actually not the case it is not necessarily that you let things happen by themselves although in this case of a conflict it's actually practical to let your opponent fight out the conflict and not invest too much in it uh, but uh, it is about finding the opportune moment of action and that is actually what you're studying in Tai Chi Chuan in Tai He Chuan like the movements here you're trying to find your interaction with the movement of your opponent uh, to find harmony in it so that you are not affected by it you're escaping all the time all the moves and you're riding basically on the wave of somebody else's effort uh, like what people very often say that is Tai Chi Chuan but in Tai Chi Chuan you're learning to polarize the opponent while you yourself stay calm so you see that in training there is this diversification of techniques with different kind of forms and different kind of actions to make sure that you go through a hierarchy of experiences and actions uh, that help you to progress uh, in your uh, work and in your life with your partners or with your children uh, without being or without seeming to be affected 
The reality, of course, is that whatever we go through through life, we are going to be affected by that life. Uh, in this movie, uh, you see that the weather in the Netherlands was cloudy and rainy, and here in Montreux, also the weather is cloudy and rainy. At the moment, when I realized there is this continuancy between Montreux at that moment and my life in the Netherlands, I was basically forgetting about the fact that maybe there was going to be sun. It was warmer, not that much warmer, uh, but it was warmer, and there was going to be a completely different experience of sky in my uh, experiences as a painter from the past came up and I realized from some of the painters that I knew from the past in my studies that uh, the skies that they were making are the result of the area where they are living and in the same way Taoism and Chinese medicine they advocate that your health is the result of the area where you live and you have to therefore always study the environment that you live in to understand the nature of the diseases that you have. So when you migrate from one country to another country, you might expect that how you are raised and the kind of res reflexes that you have in your body to re react on the environment, they will do other things in your new environment so you get a new set of diseases. In the same way, your horoscope can be altered uh, in case you believe in horoscopes. Um, but when you are traveling, you continuously become more amorph because there's no fixed solution and you have, you're forced basically to become more conscious about your solutions and as a result of that your meditative awareness of the environment makes you react directly on what is happening and that is actually the lifestyle attitude necessi necessity that is required according to Taoism. Uh, you are required to have a meditative lifestyle and to understand a lot about nature as a whole so that at the moment when you are going through your life you can acutely react on the things that are happening to you for the simple reason that you need to react on the things acutely when they happen and that means that you have to have a lot of tools available and that is what the Dowland program of course is about it is something that is some sort of a lifestyle that you're learning but it is also a toolkit because of life necessities and you can't foresee the necessities you have completely uh, so that means you have to have a lot of tools available for things that might happen. So healthcare in that sense is basically a survival need. And when I was developing the Taoland program as part of my PhD program, observing what Taoists were doing, observing what the West was doing, you see that in Western medicine, healthcare has become a way to get a lot of people employed and stay in employment. And also as a result of that, that a lot of treatments are being standardized to make sure that people do not really get cured, but that they are being maintained uh, within a productive society without actually getting rid of their problem. The problems though, they are contributing to their aging and as a result of that, they cost a lot of money when they are getting in retirement. So then society tries as a result of that, very hard to get people to die as quickly as possible because otherwise things cost too much. That is why now people are getting longer lives. They also try to up the age in which you are going or supposed to go working. Talking from the perspective of a Taoist lifestyle and life necessity and healthcare is a set of qualities that you have to procure, not by buying, but by acting. And that actually should be learned from a very young age. I'm now experimenting with my children and I was already asked many years ago when I was still in my clinic in Amsterdam where, why I wouldn't start a primary school where I could implement that and I would very much like that but I need people to be willing to organize uh, this because I cannot be you know an organizer of a primary school alone but I can offer a program and I can train people to eventually become the teachers and instructors on this program to help the children to provide the kind of healthcare knowledge so that they could provide for their own healthcare and from that of their children. Because that's the whole thing with healthcare. Healthcare should be learned from childhood, being cultivated through your adulthood and be shared with your children so that it is part of your family history. Your family history then at that moment, of course, becomes automatically more ingrained in nature. And that is what we need to achieve in the reality of this modern life.
life. We need to make sure that we own our health and that we do not depend on the machinations of an industry. Uh, a healthcare like the Dowland Healthcare Program therefore requires community mindedness because it requires uh, sharing. In the same way I'm trying to develop a video on a Dowland economy and then also of course how uh, people can develop a life, a quality life financially also within this profession because it is not easy to develop a moral life and also to make a lot of money. And the point is not so much in our program to make a lot of money, but it is uh, to help you to develop a lifestyle which is beneficial to you, your fellow beings, and of course the Dowland program, so that we all remain part of the same kind of global community. What I think uh, that is going on with the Dowland uh, lifestyle, as far as I envision it and understand uh, actually what I got myself involved with, is that in modern neoliberalist societies, uh, of which we all unfortunately are part, the individual gratification is very important and the benefits that we personally have uh, are in a way more important, especially when you are successful, than all the people who are not successful. You are being kept in front of you a carrot that says, like, look, if you work hard and you play your cards right, you can become a Elon Musk or a, you know, anybody who is rich and famous, with or without skills. Uh, so the skills are not that important for neoliberalism, it is a matter of marketing and uh, the quality of your goods is not that important. But uh, as biological creatures, for us very important are our goods in the sense of what is their quality because they have to help us forward to the future. And whatever kind of future we have, whether it is as synthetic beings uh, because of the machinations of techno freaks or as farmers or back into the Middle Ages, in any case, uh, we are going to need to think about things as humans. And in this time especially, and I think that is one of the benefits of new age thinking that started in the 70s, uh, but is also one of the disadvantages of new age thinking. New age thinking got caught in this neoliberalist loop where self-capitalization and self-gratification has become very important and people have become super consumers uh, through their use of drugs and uh, ecstatic experiences and so on, while in fact uh, we have to learn to think as human beings. That means we have to learn to think about the needs of all of humanity and not of the few of humanity. And that is the real transition humanity can make in this uh, time because of all the innovations we went through. And that means that we have to start thinking and learning to think in a more communal way where we become more selfless and we do not think about we do not think about our self-gratification, but that we have to learn to think about the gratification of all people. And it means that all the people have right for some form of labor, all people have right for sufficient quality food, but we also have the right for the knowledge to know how we eat and what is the best thing to eat and what is the best times to eat and so on. We all have the right to understand when hygiene is good and when hygiene is not good. We all have the right to have the exercise technology or the meditative technology to understand how to manipulate ourselves to prevent that we become unnecessarily sick and that means that a lot of secondary health problems can be resolved and because of the resolving of the secondary health problems we can prevent a lot of people to become chronically ill because we can say whatever we want like it's genetically disposed or something like this when we pollute our environment when we put pressure on the ecology when we are consuming uh, too much or in the wrong way of course these genetic markers are going to be uh, switched on and we're going to have all kind of chronic diseases but it doesn't happen from one day to the next natural selection that everybody talks about as a Darwinist perspective is caused by overly pressuring the system while in fact when we talk about pressuring the system from a more kind and human loving altruist perspective then at that moment we 
can start thinking about ourselves as a community, just like ants do. And I don't want to say that we have to go live as ants, because I don't think like that. Every person is unique, and as an ant you're just part of one consciousness, namely the consciousness of the colony. And like what you now see with all these micro super ants that you see everywhere, and my garden is also filled with them. Uh, at that moment uh, you see that they are serving themselves as one uh, community and they are being successful as a result of that. In a likewise fashion, including the safety of ourselves as individuals uh, with our individual needs and of individual options, we have a long life ahead of us in which we can develop all kind of qualities, intrapersonal and interpersonal, uh, through which we become more complete human beings with a higher satisfaction grade uh, without having to bash our bodies and bash our minds and bash our feelings with extreme experiences uh, through which we eventually only end up being sick. We don't need ecstasy because it helps us waste the power of our hearts. We don't need to run very fast because it helps us waste the power of our legs and we don't need to carry heavy weights uh, emotionally or physically because eventually all these things help us to overburden our system as a human being. No, we have to learn to appreciate the nice values in our life and then help each other to carry all kind of burdens. When we support each other and at that moment uh, we are also relieving ourselves. From my personal experience, I know that because of being a therapist and because of a teacher, every time when I learn to figure out something for a client, my life gets better too. Um, before, I was very much interested in participating in all kinds of magical things because I had a girlfriend who was into these kind of things. And for years, I was trying all these kind of things, but doing all these kind of things, trying to get by everything through a shortcut because that's what magical things are. And that's what science also promises because as, as such, it is not so much different from magic. Uh, it is trying to bypass all kind of difficulties that we have to resolve as human beings and as individuals and by resolving these kind of issues we gradually uh, find satisfaction and relief from our suffering by trying to bypass things in a faster way we only increase our suffering and that's what you see in the integration of people with technology and with the development of all these large corporations who promise us all kind of instant successes uh, through authoritative uh, digital systems and that I don't think is a right way for us to go I think we should first learn to become human and second learning to deal with a hammer that was it uh, for today, my dear friend. I hope you enjoyed the video and uh, I hope it is of any use to you. It is uh, making it, is, of course, is of use to me and uh, I think it was an interesting topic. It was certainly something that I take serious myself. Uh, I look forward to see you in the next video and if you want to help me by sharing this video to your friends and helping them to become a Daolander too and maybe build a lifestyle or a career in this uh, method uh, that would be really wonderful and I would be forever grateful because the more people are going to become Daolanders the less it depends on me.